Hello, hello. Um, I'm just going to do a quick live feed. Um, right, so I've got another video coming out tomorrow. Um, EJ engine stuff. And that, what was I saying? Isn't a very well edited video. It's almost an hour long. And there's quite a lot of stuff in it that I probably could have cut out. So that's the sort of thing you want to have a strong coffee before you watch. Otherwise, you start getting bored. Um, but, you know, it doesn't matter that much. Hello, how are you? So when you watch it, if you want to sort of fast forward through the midsection of it, particularly where we're pulling starter motors apart and all that sort of stuff, distributors, you know, that sort of thing, it might, you might find it a bit flat. And it's just how it is. I didn't really edit it very well. There's a lot of content in it. Um, we do a lot, an awful lot of stuff, but, you know, it's the execution wasn't that great. Um, so there you go. Hang on, I'm just texting somebody. Um, so I hope everyone's well. The pandemic's a bit of a pain. We've got more, um, more lockdown and that sort of stuff, which isn't really great. But it is what it is. There's not much we can do about it. I make the most of it, and certainly for things like building the engine stand. I've been building a stand for this. Um, hello, Paul. How are you? Uh, found your really old VE with a water leak. Very useful. Yeah, the sunroof. Um, I was going to say, so I made a, a stand out of a whole bunch of junk, you know, old school desk parts and that sort of stuff, and we'll add to it. So now it's just a trolley for an engine to sit on, but then we'll add to it, and um, it'll have... It was Graham's idea, actually. We, we spoke about it, and he said, why don't you have a whole EJ Holden on there, you know, where I was just going to have the engine and mechanicals and that sort of stuff. Well, now we can have all the wiper motor and the horn and the lights and all that sort of stuff just to make sure everything's working. I also mucked around. Hello, Adrian. I also mucked around, hi, Pat, with the wiring loom. I sort of unraveled it and had a look. There was a few bits and pieces in there I didn't want, so I removed them. And this... Um, the wiring is in impeccable condition. It's just some of the plugs that are a bit sunburned. I want to see if I can get some connectors um, and replace those because if I can replace just the plastic body of the connectors, well, the wiring looks as good as new. Yeah. It's in very, very good condition. So I'm really happy about that. So, yeah, I've been sourcing parts from a guy around the corner from here, Craig, is a parent from school. I went and got a, another starter motor from him, um, but that turned out worse than the one I had, and I got a, a water pump. Uh, what do you call it, pulley and fan, that sort of stuff. Um, hi, Adrian, how are you? Greg, how are you? Happy to see Peter is alive. Thank you very much. Oh, hello, Kay. Um, Kay Derbyshire, yeah, I've forgotten your, your Christian name. How are you today? Not so many, not so sunny in Blackpool at the moment. Is Blackpool dreary? That doesn't really surprise me. <laughs> and good day to everyone. It's lovely to see you here. So, yeah, this video is coming out tomorrow. I've released it to Patreon. I've always released the ones to, to Patreon first, um, for the first 24 hours. I don't know that anyone's really seen it yet because I only just finished it. And I told Graham I always give him a link too because he's helping with the, with the car and everything. So I sent him the link and he, I think he's watched it. Um, so I won't do any more just pulling apart and this crap all over the bench. Um, thank you very much. Uh, because that's limited... Um, interest in that sort of thing. It's it's good if you're pulling apart sort of something similar at the same time, but for the rest of people, it can be a bit mundane. So I won't be probably doing those sorts of things anymore. Now I know basically what I've got. Um, I can sort of take it from there. And I've brought the engine block back from the engine builder. He's had a look at it. He's punched out the cam, be cam bearings and this sort of stuff. He put in the hot tank. Um, when Graham got the engine in the video, you'll see there's all these photos of this rusty, horrible uh, engine block. And he, um, I think it was under a tree, he found it. And so basically he, he rubbed it back a bit and gave it a paint job. I think he etched it too because there's this sort of etching residue. It looks like etch residue all over it. So for the crack testing, I want to clean all that off. Um, so it's nice, clean, cast iron, and they can do a crack test on it. Um, oh, DJ, how are you going? It's good to see you here. So <clears throat> that's back at the moment. I'll clean that up and then I'll take it back in a couple of days' time and then he can start boring it and doing all this sort of stuff. And I've also got to clean up a bit of surface rust on the crank. So I want to get the bottom end of that engine done sooner than later. The top end being the cylinder head. The cylinder heads are expensive to do. 
and we're going to be putting red motor valves in it and hardened seats and this sort of stuff. So that'll come next, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's just bits and pieces as I can. Um, in the time I've got, the lockdown's provided a bit more time, but it's also more um, demanding as far as school's concerned. So, you know, we're just doing what we can. So it's good to see you've arrived. It's lovely to see everyone. Um, Phil with the XF, did you get my email? Is that the one about the springs? I've got them all. I have still haven't sent them. They're behind me. I'll send them out through Ego. So I got a whole lot of um, Falcon Seed Springs from Mr. Derbyshire, and I haven't charged anyone. There's, there's two people that needed some, and I've sent some away, and I've kept the others. Um, so thanks very much. I can't remember his Christian name. Kay Derbyshire is in the chat. So <clears throat> it's all it's all going well. It's all going well. The thing that's disconcerting with these sorts of things is, you, you know, the starter motor I need brushes for, so I'll send away. There's, there's some in the United States, some in England. I haven't seen anyone here with them. And yet you go on eBay and there's the reconditioned starter motor for 500 bucks, and you know they've just turned the commentator down and stuck brushes in and a rattle can paint job, maybe a bearing here and there. So, I mean, that's all stuff I can do here anyway. Denver, Colorado, how are you going in the USA? Steve, I'm going well, thank you very much. Phil, I'm going well. Me Tongue, oh, you're in up in the. Where is Me Tongue? There's a river around there somewhere, isn't it? Robert, how are you going? Um, so that's the Holden stuff. The Starlet, I still haven't got the bloody screen in. I've been slack and I've got it because I'm driving the Commodore around every day. And, you know, in the short trips I do running Rosie to work into the shops and that. And even then, it sucks petrol. But um, it's good to be able to drive it again. So I've got to finish that start. I'll put the MG back in the garage. There's loads and loads of stuff, and it's so cramped here. But um, the house isn't cramped inside. The house is lovely. We had a big throwout session, actually, and I filled up the entire nature strip with junk. I ran the council. Well, you do it online, and you have a council collection of hard rubbish, and I filled the whole nature strip of junk that I didn't want, and must have went before the council even came to pick it up. The bike builds. I've got to get back onto those, don't I? Two of the bikes I've got are very, very close to finished. They're virtually finished now. One's a Suzuki, little 250, and the other's a 354, which I restored back to original. Those two bikes are that far off being complete. The 750 does need a bit more money spent on an exhaust and that sort of stuff. Hi, Anthony. How are you? Yes, I'm well. Um, Croydon Maccas, Judd. You're at Croydon Maccas. Are you allowed to be there? <laughs> um Finally started pulling apart my really rusty Windsor. What a mess. Is it being left outside? Has it? Is it sort of destroyed? Hamilton, New Zealand. How are you going? Jay McCormick. So, yeah, everything's cool. Everything's really cool. It's just uh, the lockdowns are pain. Like, I ordered the wheels for the just casters, 70 kilo casters, each one for this trolley three days ago, Bunnings, and just got a thing this morning. Uh, an email this morning. So I went in at seven or quarter past seven in the morning to go and pick the casters up to finish the video because I wanted to um, I wanted to weld them on the bottom of this stand I've made. But they're on there now and it, it looks pretty good. Um, when are you going to finish the 350 build? Is that the one that sits behind me when I'm in the garage? Or is it the one that's restored? The one behind me is like a 350, I call it 350 special. I'm looking forward to getting back into that, actually. I look at it all the time and I think, I've got to get back into that thing. That's up here. Um, the bores are too rusty. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, you sort of have to bore them with like that. Mine, I sort of tried a dunny brush home. They kind of came up. But then I thought to myself, I'm just going to bore it. Bugger it. Question, I've ordered a pair of upper control arms online for an XC Falcon. But the pivot pins have a metal bushing like the XBs. Oh, I don't know the answer to this. Hang on a second. I'm just trying to remember what they look like. The pins fit on the XC. Are you talking about the upper one that you get the through bolt all the way through? Because there's two different lengths of those. The bushing should be interchangeable, I would have thought. I'd need to see them. 
yeah, I've got it. The Suzuki just needs. I got. I got pissed off because the. Um, I got really annoyed. The the Japanese joint Cruising Image didn't send all the brake parts out already. So the only thing the Suzuki needs to be finished is. Uh, I'll put another voltage. I put a, a voltage reg on it, like a rectifier regulator, but it might not be heavy enough. Um, that being said, it's a very light duty um, charging system, but those things can throw 16, 17 volts out and absorb it into a lead acid battery. You're constantly topping them up with water. But if you want to run an AGM or anything like that, you, you can't. And so there's no rectification or there's no sorry, regulation on them. So I want to change that and I'll just put the front. I've got to rebuild the front caliper and the master and that's it. Then it's finished, you know. I have to clean it. Seen lots of holders motors for sale here in Adelaide. They seem to be up there. What's his name? Graham picked up about six of them. I wish lockdown would end so I can sit inside Macca's <laughs> and down flat right. Yeah. Macca's coffee's pretty good. The T250 Bill is one I'd love to ride. I got that. That was a, a project from a friend of a friend. But one of them's Andy Brook from the Ford Forum, and he, he had a friend that was going into state for his work, and he got the bike and he pulled it apart and he collected a bunch of bits and got some stuff done, and then he just, you know what, I need to get out of it because he, he had to leave because it took up a lot of room in the back. There was a back shed, which was kind of not like a shed. It was more like a, like a detached rumpus room sort of thing. And so I just went in and he, he sold it very cheaply. To me. Oh, crap, look at that. He sold it very cheaply and I picked it up and still owes me a few grand though by the time you get new. It had rims and new, you know, with your lacing done and your new tyres and your engine bits and all that sort of stuff. Try let trolls us on a rusty engine. There is a lot of people that have done that and they've done it successfully. I don't know how to do it. In fact, I've never been interested in any of that stuff here because there's just no room. And as far as plating is concerned, I get a lot of people saying, just do it yourself, you'll save a fortune. But the problem is I don't want vats of hydrochloric acid around and that sort of stuff in a confined area like the garage. Um, it's the sort of thing you probably set up in a garden shed, sort of by itself. But even then, my garden shed, I've got two of them. One, they're both full. I'm going to throw a lot of stuff out of one of them and Suzanne will move a lot of her stuff. So I'll condense it to one and then I'll just turn the other one into a little spot for the MG, I think. Um, I enjoyed the bike videos too. Have been helping my dad with his 64 Triumph T90. Wow. Previous owner was very DIY, but not too much on quality. Bathroom seal and use, etc. Yeah, that's like the old guys that get the old Wolseleys. They use house paint on them. I've seen that a few times. Do you think a really rusty cam can be re-ground and used again? They can... With camshafts, what they'll do, because the one that I'm using is 5,000 Thunder, so they push the bearings out of this grey motor and the cam they measured up has been 5,000 Thunder, so you can get oversized, yeah, oversized bearings for your cam. But sometimes it's easy just getting the right cam that hasn't been ground before in terms of the journal. Um, the lobes can be, yes, they can regrind those. It depends how rusty. If it's really rusty, you'd have to ask someone who does that stuff. Wish my lockdown hair <coughs> looked as good as yours. Mine's just too long. I've got a ponytail. And my kids always tease me about it, so the more they tease me. One of them wanted to, um, we watched the Osbournes. Have you seen that? Ozzy Osbourne had a show in the earlier 2000s and it's full on bad language and all this sort of stuff. And he's got, because the glasses I normally wear are round. Um, I never wear them on the videos because I'm wearing reading glasses on the videos because I'm working on them. But the ones I walk around with outside are round. And he said, why don't you dye your hair? And I said, because I'm too old. He goes, no, we'll do it red at the back and black on the top like I was the other one. I thought, yeah, right. Um, it's good, especially with the new blend they introduced this year. In fact, you can buy five and get your six for free. Oh, you're talking about coffees. I had to look and see what you were talking about. I'd forgotten. <laughs> I'm just settling for tea. I've still got my tea here. Suck of that stuff, I love it. And you know what? I probably make 10 cups of tea a day, and of those, I probably drink four. Um, because I'll probably more, probably five, because I never drink them all. I go up and do something, and the tea's gone cold, and you've got to throw it out. Do you know what I mean? Um, okay, I've got to think. Okay, 
Um, the Cayman, my really rusty EFI wins are stamped GT, but the whole rest of the motor seems stock, so I don't know if it's anything special. Do the heads have GT40 on them? You can measure it. You can measure your, your lift with a vernier and, ditch and subtract your base circle measurement by measuring that on the side and find out what your lift and everything is. Winds is apparently, I thought they had a bad cam in them, but apparently it's in the electronics. You can wake them up just electronically, and they're really powerful apparently, the 302 ones. Love the Victor Vins. Haven't touched the Victor. I gave two away. I gave one back to the neighbour next door, the gold Mayfair. That was his father's. He's an elderly bloke now. He's 83, I think, and his dad bought it new in 1969. And I gave it back to him because he said he wanted a keepsake from his, from his father, and I said, well, you can have it. You know, you know they didn't charge him for it. I dropped a bit of money on those, those mowers too. By the time everything was blasted, the bases and all, it ended up being quite expensive, but I wanted him to have it back. And the other one I gave to Harvey, um, the utility, which I was really glad to because he liked it and I had nowhere to put it. My nanny used to paint her walls with house paint. When I was a kid, I thought she was the only one. No. No, I've seen that a few times. I bought one and it's a pain in the ass to get off. You can't. It's it's horrible. It's horrible. Exterior house paint is plastic and it's dreadful stuff to try and remove. So... Yeah, there's a lot of people do that sort of stuff. And he didn't do a bad match on it too. He, got, he obviously went to Bunnings or whatever his hardware shop was and got the paint swatches and matched them against his car and then went and got some solar guard or whatever it was and just painted. It was hellish to get off. Because he hit it with sandpaper and it blocks all his sandpaper up. You can't do anything with it. You can't use a heat gun on it. It's just crap. It's horrible. Painting the living room with house paint. Well, at least you've got the right gig for the right job. The right, yeah, stuff for the right job. So, as far as the next one is Pippa Miles, oh, I'm using my work computer, I'm getting emails. Um, the next video is this, right? I've got to take the block back to Tony at Speedworks. I use Tony at Speedworks in Ringwood. Um, he, he's a stickler. He, this guy builds 900 horsepower Windsors that are normally aspirated. Is, brilliant at what he does. Most of his stuff is race stuff. I go there because well, I started going there because it was close and you can get there in lockdown because it's 3Ks from here and you're allowed to um, for a car repair. So then I sort of liked him because he was honest and did really, really great work. So he's done a couple of engines for me now, but he wanted to take all the rust and everything off that block. So what I'll do is I'll, tomorrow I'll be cleaning the block off, the one that's going in the car. Then I've got to take that back to him and then he'll start doing all the machine work. He's going to deck it. He's going to well, deck it to the center line of the crank. Um, then he's got to bore it 60 over. And I bought the cam bearings for him. Um, the camshaft is going to be a different grind. It's going to be a modern grind, a bit of a torque cam sort of thing. Um, it'll have the bigger red motor valves in it and it'll be compressed a bit more. Um, so I'm shooting for nine to one. And I'd really love to see it produce 100 horsepower. And I reckon I can with that. 144 cubic inch should be able to get 100 horsepower out of that without too much trouble at all. Because I think they're 75 as standard, but they've got no compression and they've got no carburation. And, yeah, I reckon I reckon if I can get to 100 horsepower, that'd be great. But that's only going to be a guess anyway. Um... What needs to be done to the, finish the 750? The 750 needs um, an exhaust, a front brake, the caliper and master because then the caliper was missing and the master was rooted. So the caliper was. Um, it needs a seat because even the seat frame is rusted on that. And uh, I think rear brake linings as well. It doesn't need much. But by the time you get an exhaust in a seat, there's like 800 bucks, 900 bucks, and like, um, but I've got to finish it. I need to write it. Seeing someone trying to paint a house with car paint too. My God. Um, funny enough, the enamel that cars use, the QD enamel in the rattle cans that sticks to everything, is actually washable with turpentine, which is like house enamel. You can wash it with the same stuff, or wash it out, rinse it out with the same stuff. You can even use turps as a thinner for enamel. Um, what have we got? Did I know that Chevy made a 3S? I did know they made a 302. It was a rabbit little thing, too. 
Really, they're quite sought after. I think the Chevy 302s now. The 305's not. The 305 is in all your Chevy Caprices, New York taxi cabs, and all this sort of stuff. Um, the 307s that came here are very sought after, and the 302s certainly. 327s, they're very sought after. 350s are sort of everywhere. There's a lot of different specs of 350, man. Why not put a red motor in? Um, <coughs> well, I'd kind of like to, but it's supposed to be grey, and I've got the grey. Do you know what I mean? So the red motor I would do would be a 179 if I could find one. It just, the, the, I guess the real reason is economics. Whatever's going to work out to be the most reasonable thing to do, I'll do. I don't have any problem putting a grey motor in it because they're not um, powerful. They're very slow and all this sort of stuff, but that doesn't worry me. You know, I couldn't care less about that. If I want to get fast, you know, I'll drive, some, drive something else or whatever. But I think it's just about the parts I've got here and then I can make a start on it. I don't have to hunt around for anything. If it didn't come with an engine, it was like the XC and it was just a body shell, then, yeah, I would absolutely put a red motor in. But it came with all this stuff, and so I might as well use it. Oddly enough, it does come with two front ends, a red motor front end and a grey motor front end, so it can always get changed out later on if it wanted to. Had a 72CB 750F. That'd be worth a quid now, wouldn't it? Um, with modern synthetic oils... Has done any work on tightening clearances and engines when rebuilding them. Have a modern Ford 5.4, that'd be a modular, wouldn't it? And in the development process, they tighten clearances. Yeah, they do that. That's why, I mean, the Commodores, my Commodore's oil is seven and a half weight or 10 weight or five weight or something like that. I can't remember what it uses. And yeah, but with that comes the problem of the synthetic oils um, degrading very quickly once they get to a certain age, whereas the old minerals just turn into black cottage cheese and keep lubricating in some way. I don't think you'll find a lot of engines that are as tight in clearance um, lasting nearly as long as the old ones because I don't think people put the maintenance into them. I could be wrong with that. I'm just assuming. 186 would be cool. It says very hard finding that sort of stuff. I have two panel vans painted in house paint. Took it off. I kept the paint underneath and good. Oh, I kept the paint underneath and good. How did you get it off? Yes, you can. You can put an HR front end. Everyone was doing that. Gives you the red motor mounting points and also gives you ball joints as well instead of kingpins, as well as disc brakes, which were optional on HRs, I think. So, yeah, it's a good, it's a really good modification to do. And in fact, it's safer to do that because you're retrofitting. Um, stuff into an older car that's actually safer. And you would think the brake bias between the front and back would be the same between an EH or an EJ, sorry, and an HR. Wouldn't be much different. Its weight distrib distribution would be fairly similar. The citrus orange strip works great for house paint. I had no idea. I just learned something. Thanks for that. So we'll finish off the wiring loom and this. A few bits and pieces. We'll get the wiper motor finished, probably the starter motor finished, get the block back to the builder. There's just a few things to do. And um, I've got to also do the XC's headlights. The reflectors are back. I left that in the other video. And I've got the 227 Sikaflex, which I think is what people recommended to seal them with. But you get one crack at it, and I don't want it running all over the place inside the reflector because it's all just being done. It looks absolutely incredible. So I do want to fit those XC headlights too. Well, I can't without the guards, but I want to have them done so they're ready to fit. Um, aside from that, there's not much been going on, just working, looking after people here. There's three adult kids here, and that's always good fun. I enjoy, I enjoy mucking around with the kids. I spend a lot of time with them, particularly this time of night. I'm normally out there watching movies with them. Um, will you be painting and trimming the Holden back to original colour scheme? No, but it will be in a genuine EJ colour. So... The colour that car was was a really murky, bluey grey. I can't remember the name of it, and I'm doing it Cottesloe Cream, which is the yellowy springtime yellow colour. And the interior, I don't know what it was on that car because I couldn't find the code, but I'm going to use the brown and gold, I think. That's what I'm thinking of, and I'm not putting a rubber mat in. I want carpet. I'm not going to bother things with things like stereos. It'll not have a radio, it won't have a heater fan. It'll be just a whole special. There'll be nothing special about it. Well, um, just really to keep the cost down. I mean, 
to go and buy a premium radio, um, what do you call it? Yeah, well, a radio for a premium or a heater and console for a premium. Seats and all this is thousands and I'm just not, um, I don't really want to. You know, I'd sooner just do it nice and easy because there's, there's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. There's headlights and indicators and brake lights. There's a wire for the radio and that's about it. And the engine electricals, there's nothing in them. Thinners and a scotch brake and a drill. Gee. Takes a long time to cure, does it? I've never used it. I've never used 227. I don't know anything about it. Um, the XC on the road, not yet. I'm waiting on the guards. Graham's got the guards. I think he's nearly finished them. And we've just got to find a way to get them here. Uh, you can't cross borders or do anything. So episode 32, yeah. The trouble, yeah, and there's about 55 episodes. That went way over. I started with something. I probably shouldn't have started that, but it's nearly finished now. It looks fantastic. I'm really happy with it. New York, hello. Oh, hello, how are you? We were all thinking of you today with 9-11. It's been the anniversary, um, 11th of September. I remember coming home from a service station at 10.30 at night, and it was on telly, and I thought, this must be a Bruce Willis film. I said, what, what's this? They kept showing this plane going into the building. And I thought, hang on, they're showing it a bit too much. So I started channel surfing. It was on every other channel. And I thought, Ruth, what's happened? That was devastating. Um, so I didn't hunt for moulded carpet. Would you happen to know of a local moulded carpet seller? Yes, Knox Carpet in Kilsyth. Whereabouts are you? I got all mine from him. Um, the XCs and XW ones, the XW ones, original sort of XY saddle. And it's the loop. It's a replica of what they used to bring out the Australian cars with. And he does it. It's called Classic Loop, I think. And it's the same as you find in LJ Tehran, XY Falcons and all that sort of stuff. So I've got my XY one from him. And I've got the XCs. And the XC is another one that was different from all the others because it's really long pile. It's a very thick carpet. It's not like the standard loop or cut pile you get. It's actually really, really long. And he does that too. So it's like... No brainer. Um, hello, Harvey, how are you? Just got the notification. Hope all's well, you're going to lockdown. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. How are you going? How's that mail going? Did you get it? You got it going, didn't you? Yes, you did. You told me. You did it off a bottle because you didn't put fuel in the tank. I remember. Hello, Jim. How are you going? And Raider XC, how are you doing today? I should have more XC footage. I was just talking about the headlights. I've got to do those. They're all ready. But I've been playing around with this EJ, all this EJ stuff, probably because of the amount of a lack of room here. I'm sort of going through all these bits to see what I want to keep and what I want to give back to Craig, who's the, the parent from school that I've got a lot of stuff from. And there'll be a fair bit of stuff to give back. Um, so originally it was sort of, I was going to take the whole lot. Now I just, I don't need it. Um, um, best way to stamp engine number on an early boat Commodore while the engine's in the car? No idea. They're actually just down on the left-hand side under the left-hand cylinder head at the top. Yeah, panel vans. He's rattle canned in uh, XF panel van. And it went into a museum and he painted things with rattle cans. Do you believe that? That just looked brilliant. Um, early back, Commodore, yeah. I don't know if you're supposed to be stamping engine numbers, eh? <laughs> I don't want to give advice on that because it might be illegal. But it's it's they're very accessible to look at, but to do, I'd probably prefer the engine out just so you can get it all straight. Um, that's probably the best way I'd do. Yes, the rattle can XF. Quite surprising. So, yep, more stuff coming up. The weather's getting better and we've got the sunshine staying. Well, basically, you can be outside at 6 o'clock now. Daylight saving will start in October. And that means that gives a lot of time to be outside and doing things up to about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Nice boats behind me. That is the Titanic. And that one is the SS United States, which is still banged up in Philadelphia, I think, isn't it? They removed all the asbestos and they were, all the, the United States Preservation Society, whatever it's called, I donated to them <clears throat> because I'd love to see it recommissioned. It was one of these top secret gigs in the 1950s in the Cold War 
and they actually have aircraft, well, they had, it used to have aircraft carrier engines in it, so it could get to 40 knots or something. It was fast. It was really, really fast, I think. But it's, um, it's still banged up in Philly somewhere, and I think they're about to scrap it. I haven't read about it lately. And periodically I'll go and looking for it on the internet and find out what the latest one is, latest bit of news is. Um, 207 sets around 24 hours. I use black and white for automotive applications. Fabulous stuff. When not in use, chuck in the freezer for later. Oh. Also, how viscous is it? Like, does it come out like silicon or does it come out like liquid? I need something that'll give me a bead for around the headlights. And I've never used it. I don't even know what it's like. But I didn't want to commit when I and then find out it's not what I wanted. How does it actually come out of the cartridge? <clears throat> You've used Black 221 on quite a few automatic, automotive applications and it does take quite a while. I don't mind it taking a while. That's, that's all good. Uh, all right, then. So... Daylight saving lockdown, you blokes in the city will be out of lockdown in a couple of weeks with all the vaccinations stick in there. Yeah, but the numbers are going nuts. It's 450 today, wasn't it? Comes out pretty thick. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. That's exactly what I needed to know. So I can lay a bead around the outside of the headlight ring and then put the lens on and just tape it up, I suppose. God, if it goes wrong, it's going to look terrible. <laughs> Yeah, so they're talking about once we get to 70%, I think 63% or 64% have had their first vaccination. About 40% have had both. But then you've got to worry because the Delta thing they reckon is more harmful for children. So the first coronavirus was hitting all the oldies, middle-aged and old people. The kids just didn't have to worry about it. But this new variant apparently is going after young people. Um. I'm currently using a 351 Cleveland playlist at the moment. Bought myself first project, a mighty big one at that. Definitely give me a hand. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Black silicon adhesive is what I use. With um, Permatech, is it? With silicon. Don't ever use acetic acid silicon. This, if it's silicon, it smells like um, vinegar. You, you can't use it on steel because it's corrosive. But if it doesn't smell of anything, that's what you can use on metals and also the backs of mirrors. Hey, Neil, how you going? Or is it Elise? Uh, have my original Rover mower purchased new in 1983 from a mower shop in Jackson Court. I wanted to restore it for me. <laughs> or I can wait until you move to the Gold Coast. You bought it in Jackson Court, did you? God, that's coming back. If you send, send it down on Ego and I'll have a go at it for you. Send it with Ego, E-G-O. Neil McClymon I went to high school with and um, he, uh, we still, we're still in touch. We, we didn't see each other for a long time. Life got in the way and he had kids and I had kids and he went into state. We didn't sort of see each other or communicate. But lately, recently, we've been communicating a lot, which is wonderful. Got myself a 76 F350. That's a monster. It's running but needs a ton of work. And I think it's got a blown head gasket. Is that a Cleveland? I suppose that'd be a 351, wouldn't it? Some of them had big blocks that they, I don't think they came to Australia. I think they're the ones that sort of were bought out later and they had 460s. And I think a 460 would be great in one of those. That's F350 is three and a half ton there. That's a big one. It'd be like a car carrier thing, wouldn't it? Big flatbed thing. Yeah. Probably had a blown head gas because it couldn't move. It's under its own weight. They're huge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. All right. Well, no, that's all right. I just thought I'd jump on and have a quick yarn. There was a one, actually, no, it was a 250. There was a 76 F250 my wife's aunt had when she gave up the horses. 351 manual truck. It was a horse carrier, and I wanted it really badly. I really wanted it, and I couldn't get it. <laughs> Where do you put that? It's like a huge truck. It had a six-cylinder crossflow in it. My God. That would have worked for its money, wouldn't it? Hi, Melon. How are you? Six-cylinder crossflow. That's crazy. Huh. Yeah. 
Good night, Peter. Love your stuff, mate. I have an XP Fairmont, and the old boy has an XC GXL. He's doing. Oh, you got blue blood, haven't you? Yeah, XP and an XC. Good cars to keep. Eight stud wheels, Jesus. Oh, I'm using the wrong wheels. F three fifty looks, but um, used by Dick Johnson. They, I had to okay that because it had Dick on it because that's his name. God, five hundred and twenty nine thousand. Unbelievable. That's some decent miles. That's a real testament to the car too, isn't it? That how good and how reliable they are. Good day, Peter. How are you not? How are you? Not good? Too much drinking? No, I'm good. No, you can leave it there. I don't mind. Everything's expensive at the moment, isn't it? It's so expensive. People are giving poor Graham a hard time too, and I don't like that. He's got 30 grand or something on his XB. And the bones are all fantastic. And I said to him, you know, just just watch. You don't know, get some chook that wants to just do a quick blow over and GD stickers and sell it for 70 grand. Yeah, an old horse truck. Yeah, that's what this was too. I can give you some grey motors, mate. Hey, Graham, you're here. I was just talking about you. We better shut up, guys. Graham's here. Speak of the devil, yeah. Graham's been having a hard time because people are being being rude to him. I can give you some grey motors. I've got some here. <laughs> Does your F-350 have a 10.25 Ford Sterling diff in it? Can you imagine that? 60 kilometres an hour, be doing eight grand. Real headlights. Put the high beam reflector in place before you seal the glass on. The high beam reflector is already there. I left them in. One of them does feel a bit loose, though, and I was going to have another close look at that. Any tips for fabricating a motorcycle wiring loom from scratch? Um, not really. They're pretty simple. Get a wiring diagram and a board to peg it out on and leave a bit of extra at the ends. <laughs> so <clears throat> there's nothing worse. <clears throat> Normally when you do wires, wiring, what I've found, is you allow, you know, a few inches or whatever either side for, for length. And by the time you tie them all up, it's, it's like they've moved and you're still a bit short. Um, so just leave it a little bit, six inches or so at the end, um, over and above what you measure you're going to need, if you know what I mean, and just peg it out on the board. So, you know, you're right, your, your front brake clutch switch is on this end of the board and down here you've got your, you know, your... What's on that? Your headlight switch or what now? You know what I mean? And then you start control on the right, and then you just sort of map out where the neck of the bike would be and where you how long the backbone is and how much wire you need, where the tail light is and all that. Just do it on a board or a table or something and stick it all down. <clears throat> Normally when they do things like that, they've got a board with sort of nails in it and they just wrap the wires through those things and that becomes the guide. And then when you've got them all in place and there's wire everywhere, you're just putting a little bit of electro, sorry, masking tape sort of that far away from each other just to keep it all in one piece, then you can tape it up properly and then remove the um, remove the masking tape as you put the proper stuff on. It wouldn't be hard to do. Just buy yourself some wire. Don't go to super cheap or any of these joints. Go to an auto electrician supply, and that way you get the proper colours, you get the proper conductor type, all that sort of stuff, and you can make a really nice loom that way. Um, yeah, I um, know. I feel that no one knows how to be polite anymore. No, they don't. Well, everyone wants something for free. And like I told you about that other guy, I mean, I reckon he would have just given it a quick blow over and GD351 stickers because it's got the rest of the stuff in it and would have stuck a heap of money on it. That's what anyone would do. And no, they're not. And that's why I don't like selling Holdens and Fords because you get that element, don't you? You sell an old English car and you get old retired guys that know exactly what they want. They'll either buy it or they don't. They'll haggle a little bit, but... Who doesn't do that? But they're not as rude as what I've seen when you're trying to sell more sort of local stuff. Didn't come with the original owner's manual. Having trouble sourcing one. Okay, so hang on, what are we talking about again? Oh, the horse truck. All right, then. Not sure how to reply to this, but I'm not sure. Um, 
I didn't cover the original owner's manual and having trouble sourcing one. I'm tearing it down myself, but I don't have a reason not to believe it. Are you talking about the 351? Tesla have got themselves a patent. Yeah, Graham's been getting some rude bastards. Trying to sell his car and they're giving him grief. Well, everyone wants something for nothing, don't they? And um, the, the thing with Graham's car is it's as solid as the... There, there was another guy in Adelaide doing an XB and I saw what they were doing on the sills. You know, that car would look better than Graham's in terms of it being shinier. But the work that they were doing was really pretty average and I would not do it like that. And I'm not even a body expert. But Graham's car is very solid. It's very honest and you can see what it needs. And if he did any work on it, you know, it's done properly. And the engine's brand new. You know, the pistons are all new. It's not just a re-ring job. It's been done properly. So, no, it's not cheap. But whoever gets it, <clears throat> in the long run, have a better car. <coughs> Pardon me. Have you ever had any experience with a 3.5-litre Rover? A little bit. I used to work at Wilderness Motors, and we had Range Rover dealership there. And I had a 3.5 V8 here, um, which I was going to use, but didn't have a car for it, so I sold it. <coughs> Ron Dixon, how are you? I use Jay-Z's in Bayswater. Hang on, what are you, which one are you talking about? Jay-Z's in Bayswater. Got all the colours and race colour wire. Oh, okay, for wiring. Here you go. Someone was doing a motorcycle wiring loop. Ron's got a comment. I didn't know. I didn't know who they were. Jay Z's in Bayswater got all the colours and race colour wire as well. Huge selection of plugs. Oh my god! Do they do? Actually, I've got to get some plugs for this EJ loom I'm doing. The loom's in great condition. Do they have old spec plugs as well for old cars that people are restoring? Graham can sell his car for what he wants. Absolutely. And the thing is. Seriously, a blowover, dodgy paint job, and the car's the car's worth a lot of money. That's the thing. He left it with the patina, and a lot of people like that, but a lot of people don't. And that's why I said, just watch who you sell to, because I'll probably just blow over it with a paint job and with a quick paint job, give it some stickers and put a heap of money on it, which would be really annoying. Um, both of you guys don't deserve that crap. Top channels from you. Yeah, it'll last for years. I've never driven a P76. 73 Cortina. Love it in the garage. Beautiful. What is that, a four or six on it? Yeah, YouTube live track. You can't show us picture of the horse track. I'd be interested to see it. Yeah. I'm losing track of this, DP. What were you talking about? It was originally for boost. Oh, okay. The three and a half later mansion. Trying to see why no one likes them. I don't think it's about, well, there's a couple of things. The, the three and a half liter rate V8 can crack blocks. The 3.9 four liter ones and all that didn't seem to. Um, it's a good little engine. The, maybe people prefer the four point the four point four liter one's very hard to get the p seventy six one and they didn't seem to have that block problem but <clears throat> I don't know um I don't want one in my m g because I like the four cylinder in there I like the noise it makes and it's yeah I just never wanted to change that engine and maybe they want bigger cubic inches for the sorts of cars that they're going the interesting ones the daimler s p two fifty um and there was a a saloon car as well. And they're a two and a half litre hemispherical V8, a two and a half litre. That is tiny. Oh, Matt from Kidderminster. Kidderminster, sorry, in England. Where's that? Is that in the Midlands somewhere? I don't know where that is. Love your channel, Graham. Keep it up. There you go, Graham. Panel Van Man just subscribed to Graham. Don't know why, but good on you. Kidding. 
Um, greetings from Massachusetts. Love the 2006 Pontiac GDA of Holden Monaro. We'd love to visit Oz one day. I've got a friend who's one of those and it's got a supercharger on it. I went to school with him. Um, hang on, I'm losing. Yes, the um, police. The police, XD, the Rams doing absolutely brilliant. TD Cortina is a next LE. First time I drove one of those was an XLE with a six cylinder. I just thought I'd be happy with this for the rest of my life. This is a great car. Yeah, that is coming up well, Graham. Yeah. Pop the XP in the garage and sprinkle dust on it and sell as a barn find. <clears throat> there was an XAGT which I found it was in Bayswater around the corner from me. They did a full video on it. They actually got it craned out of the backyard. And that was some of the dust on that, I must say, looked a bit. Mm, I wondered about that, but ah, look. Um, Metal Man, what are the model ships behind you? That is the Titanic. That is the SS United States. That is the Oriana, which, and that, that Fijian sword. <clears throat> came from Suva. I got it when I was nine. We went around the world on the Oriana and we stopped in Fiji and got that one. The Oriana's painted in the corn livery there where normally it was, it was white after the early 1960s. I don't know if there's any other ships up there, is there? No other ships? What about over here? Nope. No, I think there was one up there somewhere, wasn't there? Oh, I don't know. Oh, there's two down there, but there's a mess on the floor. You're not going to look. There's the QE2 and the Queen Mary. I knew there was some more. Um, okay. Oh, Worcestershire. Is that how you say it, Worcestershire? I have an XF Police Dibby van. Still. Oh, wow. Guy and Bendo had an SP250 Dart. Sounded awesome when it redlined. I know. They sound great, but they can't be fast, you wouldn't think. <clears throat> Have I ever driven an XU1? No, nothing like that. I've driven five leather to a few five leather Tiranas, but not an A9X. Um, interesting original. The original Rover three and a half was a Buick designed engine specifically fitted to the rear engine Corvair in the US. The 3.8 V6 Commodore is based off the three. And, oh, I didn't know that. Missed about 20 minutes because I just got a phone call from my brother. You haven't missed much. Your room is a real treasure trove of past curiosities. Yeah, oh, yeah. my whole house is like that. That would be the SS America that was washed up on the beach. The United States was a covert car, um, kind of ship with ultra high performance aircraft carrier engines that was used, was built with the Cold War in mind. <clears throat> a lot of the superstructure, all the superstructures, only minimum on it. And it used, um, it was hugely powerful. It was a very, very fast ship, but it wasn't in service all that long. Michael Tennis toys of on the roof, beautiful. Still waiting to hear about the Titanic 2. That would be Mr. Palm, Palmer. What's his name? Clive Palmer. I think that died in the arms. House tour, Pete. We'll do, we'll go into the kitchen and make a tea, hey? Have you heard about the Tame and Shud case? Is that a joke? Sounds like a joke. Let's go and have a cup of tea. Give me a sec, turn the light on, because otherwise I'll chip over and break my neck. Give me a sec. Just a minute. Okay. Well, here's the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, okay. I'm on a live feed, so I don't say anything really insulting, right? Yeah. Charlie's in here. What are you watching? That's Christina Applegate. Yes, sir. You watching that film again? No. Is that um, Anchorman 2? Just the first one. The only wrong with that is Steve Carell. I want to punch him. Oh, I can't stand him. I shouldn't say that. It's not that I can't stand him. It just annoys me. Sorry? What do you want to watch? Because I'm doing, I've been on here for 50 minutes. 
Whoa, it sounds like you need to quit. <laughs> okay, it. hang on. I'm, I'm losing track of what people are saying. Um, I cruised on the Oriana in 1980. That ship survived through to 2005, and it was used as a floating hotel, apparently a, a cyclonic type storm. Um, knocked it and started to list it was taken water. I think it was in China somewhere, wasn't it? Seeing mechanical diesel, yeah, that what the grain is not wide very comprehensively at all. Last time I saw the SEs United States, I was in Philly and it was looking sad, and it's still there, isn't it? Summerton Man, some soft case man, then find man found dead in 1948 in Summerton Park Beach. I'm just making a tea, I'm getting out of here, Charlie. Um. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Oh, Ron. Say hi to Ron. Oh, okay. Hi. Just say hi to Ron because Ron's here. Ron? Ron Dixon, my dad. Oh, my God. Hi, Ron. Say hi to him. Don't be rude. Yeah, I did say hi. I just said hi, Ron. I said it twice. I just said Christina Applegate. Whoa. <laughs> but she's, she's been through a lot. She's had... Breast cancer and all sorts of things, the poor girl. Um, I'm just going to make a cup of tea. That's just a low freaking blow. <laughs> That's it, that child. I just want to watch Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. It's kind of like, big, it's kind of like big Mac, but for the same. Big Mac is freaking gross. I yeah, love it. this is the back. Big Mac. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll introduce you to Ivy. Here. This is Ivy. Do you remember her? The dog that a only mother could love that face. Hang on. Ivy. Oh. Hang on. Look at this. Look at these choppers, huh? Look at this. Ready? Whenever you're ready. Look at this. Look at the appetite on it. <laughs> Jesus. You get it, one too. Right. Molly says hi too. Hello, Molly. Don't be a dick. Be polite. Come and talk I'm to her. Being polite, Dad. I just had a big, big day. Okay. What? I'm sitting on the couch. Yes, Sorry. I'm sitting on the couch. Okay. We're not working because of bloody lockdown. What? And yeah. coping with you. I wasn't here. In this messy bloody house. This house is really tiny, thanks to you and Alana. Thanks to me. What's your one? You guys did such a wonderful job. Excuse me, no, that's all you, because I was the one that was um, vacuuming and mopping and doing everything, and Alana was in a room, so that's bullshit. Alana, no, 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 it's not, because Alana does peeps too. Oh, really? Really? That's such a good one. This is public, too, where you can't say things like that. It's okay, I could say a lot of things. I say words. That's rude. Myself. I I'm say good. worse Charlie, things. Charlie, I'm going. Stop it. I say worse things on my Snapchat. <laughs> That's your Snapchat. It's not my channel. <laughs> Hang on. I'd criticise the way you were raised if I didn't do it. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> that was an insult, Charlie. Yeah, that's an insult. It's Hang more on. of an insult with your parents. That I did it, yeah. Just a minute. Can I close the door and close this? Yeah, she's in the kitchen. Sorry about that. If anyone is offended, I am truly sorry. Right. <coughs> Where am I up to? Um, milk and two sugars, thanks. Yep, that's just what I got. Is the house a California bungalow? No, it's a weatherboard built in 1955, I think. And it's been sort of made a bit oldie worldy. It's got a lot of, um, it's very pickety and fretwork and that sort of stuff. I want Rosie to make me a cup of tea. She's at work. Um, I think I might consider making a few YouTube bits. I've had to try and figure out things to do with Aussie F trucks and don't have much on YouTube about it. So I might help other people. That's great. And also other people like I've had a lot of help. One guy actually, 
I was looking at the gearbox on the EJ, and there's a gear on it that's knackered, and I didn't see it, and I'm going on about how good it is. And um, I got an email from a guy or a message, and it almost sounded surly, like condescending. And I thought, mm, there's two ways I can look at this. So I took it as the, um, I took it as a kind of, um, you know, that actually annoyed me. <laughs> I didn't like it, but that's all good. Um, yeah, Rosie makes great pizza. I actually went and got a seafood pizza before. Ooh, that was beautiful. Anchovies, yum, with prawns and aioli and all sorts of stuff. Uh, what do we got here? Buick Skylark and Olsen Buick Cutlass Aluminium, aluminium 3.5 litre, 215 cubic inch. Yeah. The banter between me and the kids. Between Charlie, Charlie will go from zero to 100 like that. Do you know what I mean? And so it turns into full bore, four letter word insults if you're not careful. And that's why I was very careful in there that he wasn't going to, because I forewarned him that when I walked in, or forewarned her, I should say, sorry, um, that I was walking in and that I was on here because I didn't want him, I was want her, gosh, sorry, yeah, that's bad, to come up with anything really offensive. Um, yeah, the SS United States do 80 kilometres an hour. That's exactly, yep, something like that. It was fl it was flying. Well, 30 knots is about 60 k's, and the Oriana would do 30. But that's fast. The Oriana was very, very fast. and um, But the SS United States was a lot quicker. So what's wrong with the gearbox? I oh, don't know. It's the selector. Uh, on that barrel, there's the selector gear, um, and it's chewed out the teeth. I'll just take I'll take the one out of the spare because they're the same. And that was much better, I think. Um, where am I up to? Art Deco stuck around Australia until the 50s. There's I love Art Deco stuff. There's things like um Art Deco doorknobs and stuff like that, but they're kind of aftermarket and chintzy and horrible. Um I've, I've got to spend some money on the house, but I haven't got the money to spend because every time I do get some money, I buy car parts. Um, that's what if you're learning curve, yeah. But you'll find I, I like to, um, I love the advice I've got. I've been very fortunate with some of the advice I've got from people. You do get the odd armchair um, expert doesn't know what he's talking about, but you can normally pick them with the way they're speaking to you. But, um, certainly with, um, just tips and things like that, someone will, I, I've had endless amounts of it, like XC, um, Julie Exhaust Bumper. You mean you can try and find one? And I just thought to myself, I'll actually weld up a bumper bar and I'll have to metal finish it and get it chromed to have the dual cutout because I wanted it to look right. I didn't just want to cut out. And then someone said to me, there's one for 200 bucks around the corner from your house. I thought, you kidding me? It was in Croydon. It was 200 bucks. You know, I just thought I'd have to jump on there. So people always find things and then tell you and you have to listen to, to people. I've, I've been very lucky with this YouTube thing because it's, there's a lot of people that are very, very kind to me, really kind to me. So if you do get a prickly one from time to time, it's just not going to worry me. You know, I could care less. Mm. Uh, what do I got to? Um, good day, Peter. Love the videos. You inspired me to buy a project. Come on. What did you get, Paul? Have I been driving the Corolla since? No, I haven't. I haven't. I've been just driving the Commodore. <clears throat> um, do you remember that demolition yard in Warrenwood? Not offhand. Demolition yard in Warrenwood. No. If you tell me a bit more, I might. Um, Pete, are we ever going to see this jigsaw finish, mate? Stay focused, big guy. Yeah, I'm in no hurry. Are you? <laughs> it's out of my hands. Um, I haven't got some of the parts here because they're getting worked on. I've got the headlights here. I've got everything basically to finish it. It's like the two bikes I was talking about before. I mean, people get funny with me because I haven't finished those. And it's 200 bucks to finish one and about 50 bucks to finish the other one. I just haven't done it yet. I like getting things to the point where they're almost there. And then I go, yeah, I'll do something else. And that's why I'm amazed that people still watch my crap because it's very frustrating. The GXL is almost finished. I just, the only thing that's worrying me a bit on it is I have to find out why the rear electric window is playing up on the right inside. Oh, 320U. Good on you. I think I know what they are. 
I'm pretty sure I know what they are. 70s. Was it 70s? Early 70s? 320? Do you think Ford did something special with your dad's? No, <clears throat> it was a service manager's car. I think they just rejetted it or they did something like that. We measured the camshaft, actually, and the camshaft seemed to have a bit more lift. I wouldn't surprise if they did because 1964, wow. Um, because it always went well, but it was temperamental and it was never, like its performance was never reliable. Sometimes you drive and it was awful, but after we had the carburetor done, it was a lot more stable. Just getting my XL 250S ready for annual inspection. Beautiful. Hmm. So, so Datsun 320. I'm having trouble remembering what that looked like. I thought it was a roundy headlight thing from the early 70s, but it must be. Um, whereabouts are you based around? I'm in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. And so there have been COVID cases around Croydon, which is very close to me. In fact, the place my mother lives in now is in Croydon. But they jump all over it fairly quickly. Um, so around this, so the, the problems are mainly, is it western and northern suburbs? I can't remember. I think it's northern suburbs. But it's, yeah. Is the XD original paint? No. I painted it about 15 years ago. It needs to be redone because it all got destroyed under a wet cover. We have more days than years, so no hurry to finish projects. Well, when you finish them, you've got to drive them and you've got to, you know, register them and all this. And it's, you know, it's only just, oh, let's do something else. <laughs> it's like the mowers, finish them, stuck them on a the shelf and never looked at them again. <laughs> not very, it's not very helpful attitude, is it? But, um, no, I, I really enjoy getting, it's the biggest thing, like, we had this huge, you can never call me a hoarder. Everyone calls me a hoarder and I'm not. I get far too much satisfaction with throwing stuff out. I really do. We had this hard rubbish and I was on the war path for anything I wasn't going to use and just chuck it out there. I mean, a lot of it was the seat foams I bought or some of it, sorry, was the seat foams I bought for Graham's sister's car, the Toyota. Um, I threw all the frames out into the metal recycling at work. I should have just left them on the nature strip. People come and collect that stuff all the time. But there was outside tables, there was chairs, there was junk, there was and even a wrought iron gate that I made a side gate out of. And I thought that's a really, really good way to use something. I love junk that I can make look really good. And if I can't, it's no good to me. I want to throw it out. And once I'm finished doing a job, I love cleaning up afterwards too. And just saying, I don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. And you just go on the wall path and start throwing stuff out. And because I got so many things in bits here, there's a lot of stuff that's backlogged. But Particularly in the shed, you know, there's there's all sorts of stuff in there and that's, w will you use it, you know? I would never have it so I've got boxes all over the house. I won't have that. The house has to be tidy. What the outside's like is a different thing. But, um, you know, I mean, at the moment I've got a bunch of boxes on the floor here. They're people, they're XC parts that a guy wanted, so that'll go and that will go and, you know, I've got the pair of shoes they're going to throw out. But I love cleaning up. Uh, where am I up to? Tell us the story of how where how how and where your dad got the XT. He wanted a V8 for Mum to tow the horse float in when I was a kid. I was in year seven, and he ordered a Ghost Gum, which is a beige XD Fairmont forward disc brakes, larger radiator, three out two, and then they he paid the deposit, and then Ford jacked the price up, and he said, "Well, I paid the deposit," and they said, That's, "We can't do anything about it." He said, "Well, stick the car in your ass." So then he um. They had the service manager's car, which was that brown one, which was a GL, and it had the 302. They put the bigger radiator, the triple core radiator in it, which since I've lost, um, I don't know what it was that, and a class two towing pack and all that sort of, a Heyman Reese towing pack and all that sort of stuff. And he bought that, it had 4,000 kilometres on it, it was $7,700. And it's been here ever since. Well, Dave Raymaker's had it for about three months, and it came home, probably because he saw me really sad. Uh, sorry, oh, I don't know what that means. Um, 
The most enjoyable part of building cars is hunting for parts and finding a car to build and looking in the wreckers. Looking in the wreckers is great fun. Looking in the wreckers is great fun. I love the wreckers. The graveyard. I think I did that in a video. I said I've come to pay my respects to the dead and then we panned down from the trees. There's just junk cars everywhere. It's like, oh. Oh, God, this is a good tea. I'm almost tired and tempted to hang up and drink this tea. <laughs> How's the start? It's windscreen going. I haven't started. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Windscreen. Like an hour to clean up around the screen and put some etch around it. Let it go off for two weeks and get the windscreen going. Have I done that? No. I've got to do that. In some ways, I'm very lazy. In other ways, I just don't stop. I don't know. God love and also hate when overseas companies make specific mods for the Aussie market. Finding parts for these specific models can be nightmarish. Mm, certainly can. Sidon, so, Evil, how are you going to add the garden shed and the MG extension? Yeah, I've got a rough idea. I've got to make it so it doesn't look different from the outside, but there's a car in there. The first thing I've got to do is Suzanne's got to come and get some of her stuff, but she hasn't got a place yet. Um, she's going to buy a place. And I've got to actually throw a lot of junk out. There's a lot of junk in her shed that can get thrown out. I was throwing a tiny bit of it out but nothing which she would have wanted. I threw it, there was a, a, one of those umbrellas that is on an angle, and all she did was fall over. It was a pain in the ass, so that went straight down. Um, and, yeah, I can condense those two sheets into one without any problem at all and just have good stuff in there and throw a whole lot of stuff out. Um, Toyota Close, your beard had Toyota Tiara, Ute, leading possession of locally made Toyotas, 64 or so. Wow. What's the rarest car I've owned? I had an XA Fairmont GS Keiko car, which is a 351 manual, which I wrecked for the engine. I'm a Holden man, but love your Ford V8 build. It's going to look forward to your old Holden build. Good on you, mate. Good on you. See you later. Take care. I flicked you a text with a couple of pics. Pistol 85. How are you going? Oh, wrong phone. Um, okay, what's Graham sent me? Graham, there better not be dick pigs. Oh, here we go. XD's at the records. Wow. Was in the records on Friday and snapped his picture. Oh, my gosh. Look at this, guys. Can I show everyone, Graham? Hang on. I'll turn on the side. You get a bit of a look at that. XD's city. And you said those taillights are hard to come by? We should have stopped off and got some. Hang on a minute. There seems to be a good little, there seems to be some good stuff in Adelaide. That seems, look, this is ZJ or ZK Fairlane under that. And then we've got more XDs. And even see this one here, that's a Fairmont or a Fairmont gear with that trim around the indicator. They're hard to get. They're really, really hard to get. So these are really, really, they're good. Thanks, Graham. So where was this? You should have picked up some taillights. I would probably, I would probably buy some off you too because I I had a pair spare set, but they were off the original, off my XD, and they were all crazed, and I threw them out. Everyone wants to know where it is. Now he's going to go. Nee, you're not going to tell you. <laughs> Do that, Graham. Just say oh, I can't tell you. It's a trade secret. If I tell you, I have to kill you. Um, Pistol Pete, how's your Munro going? Have you done more to that? Yeah, as a kid, I used to love the tip as well. We used to find those round 50s um, washing machines with the ringers on top. And I've still got the motor out of one of them I took when I was nine years old. And that was the, one of the reasons I was sort of, um, I had to have one. I wanted to buy one of those ringer washing machines. I've got one in the shed. Oh, this guy's not. He he really wants to find out where it is. There was an XP wagon, an XP sedan under a P6, at least ZH Fairlane, at least three ZH Fairlane stacks of XDs. The Wreckers is called Hilliers. Oh, when I looked at cop in the eye, yeah. I went, I was 14 years old and I. Made a bogus rego plate for my CB350F when I was, yeah, I was 14. 
And I thought, I'm a bit of a man, so I stuck a helmet on. It was a shit helmet. It was an open face rattle can gold, and it didn't even have a peak on it. So it was just this <laughs> round thing. And I was on the way to the mill bar to buy some cigarettes. And um, I'm riding up there, and his copper's looking at me. He's doing, he, he's turning right out of, no, he was turning left into Park Road from these road, and I was running past, and we made eye contact looking at each other. I just thought, I'm screwed. So I sort of got ready to stop, and he went the other way. He was obviously too busy. When I was young, wait, hang on, when I was young, friends and I used to tour our tips every weekend. Problem now is trying to deal with the two factories full of car, care and parts. When you run into Ray Kwan next, ask about Mansfield tip. He retired. He John at old school still sees Kwani. Um, he Ray hangs around golf courses now, I think. Um, but yeah, he <clears throat> I haven't seen Ray since Soon after, I wouldn't have seen Ray for five years now. I wouldn't mind seeing him again. He's a grumpy old bastard. That's a good record, Ray. I'd keep a lid on the location of that. Is it all for sale there, is it? Yeah, I know. I, I took the XD out and nearly crashed it. I was fishtailing up the bottom of Bringer Road. Nope, not fish shops. This record is in Lonsdale called Hillier's Ford Records. You're a real Aussie, mate. Thanks. An appreciation for old school cars. I love the old cars. My F350 going maybe the overall massive size of it. Yeah, but the cobbles have probably won it so they can stick the hoon driver's cars on the back of it. Don't they take your car for 30 days if you do a wheelie? God, that's nice. That's a good. That's a good tea. That's a really good one. I still can't get a good one every time. More car stories. Oh, I've got a bunch of them. Question, mate. Are the hang on a second. Are the rear quarter where the bumper's recesses are different from the XRT and WY? Graham, have a look at this question from Piss Lady Five. It's Pete in Queensland. He's got a question here, and I'm not sure. Rear quarters, where the bumpers are recessed on XR to XY, are they all the same? Are XT, X, are XR and T different to XWY? I actually don't know. I'm assuming they're the same. They should be. But I've never really noticed. Um, there was a near-complete EH hole that made Peter's new EJ look new. God, that must have been bad. You've been in there too, have you, Robert? Two ICC blades. Oh, I've got a friend that loves those things. Oh, it doesn't matter, mate. I haven't done any work on the XC and everyone's busting my chops about it. I always get grief for that. I always used to say, in spring, I work on it in spring, and then first day of spring, one guy goes, spring, get onto it. It's like, mm. Yes, the quarters are different. Oh, okay. Um, XWY have a style line. Oh, they do too. Okay, aside from the style line, though, he's talking about the recess, where the recesses for the bumpers are. That'd be the same, wouldn't it? Where it's scalloped out for the rear bumper. Yeah, they do have a style line. I forget. The style line kind of starts and, and runs out there, doesn't it? Oh, good on you. Here, clean it up. He's not cheap, no. No, if he's got stuff like that, he's going to be charging whatever he wants. You can use an X, Y, X, W, but you won't be able to use the whole panel. <coughs> Boris Johnson. Hang on, I've uploaded a video. I just want to see if that's my page. Hang on. Um, hang on a sec. Good to see you. How are you going? What head should I use for the Toronto 253? Don't know. I don't know much about Holden V8s. Anyone here clued up with Holden V8 engines? 
early 253 heads, I would think. Um, although blue motor ones, I don't know the difference. I think the valve, hang on a second. The valves are in a different order on the blue motor. I think the camshaft's different too, obviously, because of hot spots. They had hot spots in them as red motors, but blue motors, they changed that, I think. Um, I could be I could be wrong. Who can help me with 253 and 308 Holdens? I thought they, if you put blue motor heads on a red motor, you had to change the cam as well because they... Oh, shit, I can't remember. No, the firing order's the same. I don't know. Just get some red motor heads. I don't know if Holden... I think 308s had dish pistons, did they? Do they use the same head and just different pistons? I'm not sure. Um, if, when the apocalypse of fossil fuel sets in, you have the option of gas, would you consider it? Yeah, if I can drive it, sure. That's probably, they'd be growing fuel out of sugar cane, wouldn't they? The guy at the records was known for being hugely expensive back in the day, but these days his prices don't seem so bad. Probably because everyone else's prices have just gone bananas. Street car culture. I just saw your thing for your master that you put up there. You've got a, um, you've posted a video somewhere on YouTube. Yeah, your little master turbo. That's a tidy looking car though. And you know how I said to you, if you want to sell it, let me know. And you said you've got too many cars. You're right. Because since that conversation, I've picked up another two. <laughs> One's a little Corolla and the other's an AH Holden. Both from South Australia. It's nice to see you. Um, I hate painting with a brush or roller. Give me a spray gun any day. Ditto, but when it's a house, though you get the, particularly on the outside, you get the UV protection from splooching all that paint on. If you do it, if you thin it down too much, you make it the UV protection. You've got to do it again in a couple of years. Whereas if you splash it up there with a brush, it lasts for 10. Um... I was going to convert to methane. Got to work out how to make a bait valve. Isn't methane from gas generated from rubbish and waste and that sort of thing? Um, I loved how he walked down his drive in that 55 Sunliner with the blown wide block. Oh, gosh, he's a real hot rodder, isn't he? Yes, thanks for joining me. You need to swing past when the restrictions ease and take it for a spin. I wonder, yeah, I'd like to meet you and we'll do a collaboration of some sort. Because you seem to know much more about JDM stuff than I do. Graham sent more pictures. Oh, Graham, that's so rude. Why would you do that? I'm only kidding. I'm not into those sorts of pictures. Oh, my goodness me. Can I show these, Graham? Jesus. That man has some cards. He could charge what he wanted. That's why his prices are high. Nobody's got um, access to... Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Look, there's a... Oh, there's an EA there. Well, that, should, that was probably parked there when it was new. I'm kidding. I had a green. My XC was like that one. But that's the non-metallic green, I think. Mine was a colour called Cool Mint. It's got Cortinas and everything there. That is, I just had a fright then. I thought I'd just stuck your phone number up there, Graham. They're nice. Um, gee, there's a few treasures up there, isn't there? So you wouldn't see that around Victoria. Oh, different yard, isn't it? 350 Munro, I haven't seen you for ages. How are you going? <sighs> Hang on. Still need to swing past when the restrictions ease. Take it for a spin. I've got that. Graham. Um, chasing rabbits late one night out Templestowe Way, found an open gate and ended up on a hill climb track in the moat with five people hanging <laughs> off the back. Two years later, I got to raise it. Awesome. <laughs> no more lockdown. What's up with lockdown? Is there some news that I need? That's my crime. What do they say about lockdown? Is there any news? 
If money wasn't a question, what's my dream car or bike? Bike would have always been a CBX 1000 um, car. Uh, I only like the cars. I would never buy a Lambo or anything like that. It would, it would be an Aussie car. Probably a, probably actually a two-door Monaro, like Pistol Pete's got. I would never have the money for, for one of those unless I sell everything here, and I'm not going to do that. So I would think a two-door hold Monaro. HKTG. And it wouldn't be a Bathurst one. I'm not interested in the high spec ones. Just a even a six cylinder manual one. Like the one I, I had when I was younger. I've always um sort of fallen in love with the cars I've had then had to sell them for some reason. If I've sold them because I didn't like them, that's one thing. But if I sold them because I couldn't keep them anymore, they're the ones that I normally go looking for when I'm more financially which now is not gonna be for a long time. Oh, they stay on the road longer because they don't get them road with it. Let's watch your mower fire up video. God, that's a while ago. Yeah. Would you consider a classic mini? Yeah. My brother had one. I'd love a classic mini, but they're another one. They're, they're more, more expensive than bloody falcons, those things. Yeah. That's an um, HG Monaro 350. That's a heck of a nice car. Did you ever mention what colour you'd be painting it? Cottesloe cream is what I'm going to paint it, which is a – it'll go against some people, but that's all I really want. It's a yellow. It's a very pale yellow, like springtime yellow that Ford's used to use. Um, it's called Cottesloe cream. Can you do a fishing video? No way. I wouldn't have a clue how to do fishing. i got to go fishing. I know how to do it, but I'd be a horse's ass. I wouldn't come across well because I don't know enough. There's a large wrecking yard in Kangaroo Flat that closed in the 90s. That's up near Bendigo, Kangaroo Flat. That's where that biker bit's guys from. He's tried twice to have a clearing sale. His land is now valuable. A lot of good Holden Ford parts. Is it still open? <laughs> so apparently in Adelaide, you walk into the Rego and Rego a car that's off the road for 40 years and drive it away. Yeah, and your dad's a very fortunate man, Bogan Blokes, Bryce. I might have to say this is enough because I think it's been an hour and 20 minutes now, so it's time to leave. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming and for being positive and uh, all your support you've given me. There's a video that the patrons have got now that's uploaded. That'll come out tomorrow, as I said before. Make sure you have a strong coffee because the middle part of it, you might want to skip some of that middle content because it is quite boring. Um, Oh, I see my master, but you have to sell it back to me if I move it on. That sounds like a good deal. That's how I feel with cars like that too. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so the, the video is almost an hour long, so that is a little bit long. Yeah, I'm forewarning you about that because I didn't put any effort into the – or I didn't put much effort into the editing of it. And it's, uh, but there's a lot of content there. So um, – I'll bring that out tomorrow. I'll just make it public tomorrow. And I just want to say thanks very much again for all your help and support. And I'll say goodbye. See you later. Bye.